morning, church. You know, we're so excited to be in the house of the Lord, you know, doing this recording and online worship. You know, we really miss you and we hope we can meet together as one soon to actually worship together. But even now, as we're just worshiping online, come on, you know, just stand up wherever you are. Just let's praise together, you know. So this morning, I want to tell us to just to focus on God. You know, not on our problems. There's so many things that are going on in this world that our minds cannot comprehend already, you know. We feel so small. We feel so tiny in this world. But remember that we have a God who is in control. And God is still on the throne. No matter what our circumstances are, no matter what trials, what tribulation, what troubles we are going through, remember that we have a God who is still in control. Amen? So let's just focus on God and not on our problems because when we focus on the problems, we tend to drown even more. So when we focus our eyes on God, we will be more greater in God's love. Amen? You know, the story of Daniel, I was reminded that he was sleeping in the lion's den. Imagine Sometimes we read the Bible, we just go through, we brush through very fast, but we don't really put ourselves in that situation. But imagine sleeping in the lion's den with lions. But Daniel focused his eyes on God and he slept through the night with those lions, ferocious lions. You know, so let's just remember and focus our eyes on God this morning, amen? And we're going to worship God. We're going to give Him all we have, even though circumstances seem horrible around us, but we're going to give Him all we have, amen? So let's just pray and commit this time to the Lord. Father God, we thank You that You are in control, oh God. You know everything, oh God, even when we are awake and when we are sleeping, You know. And so God, we commit this time into your hands. Father, take us and use us, O oh God, for your glory, O oh God. We pray that as we worship, all our chains be broken, O oh God. All our worries will disappear, O oh Father. We commit, O oh God, into your hands. And we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's just worship. Come on, church. Put your hands together. When I was refusing, your love kept pursuing. One, two, three, four. Now that I tasted your love, my heart just can't get enough. Jesus, you have me. Oh, you have me completely. Yes, Lord, it's your love in my heart right Such a perfect love, oh 
is still standing, O oh God. Because of you, O oh Lord. Because of you, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful the goodness of God. I love your voice, God. You have led me to the fire, and in darkest nights, you are close like no the good Hebrews 6 verse 19 it says We have a hope as an anchor of the soul Both sure and steadfast We thank you God 
that you are our anchor, God. We thank you that no matter what happens, we can hold on steadfast unto your promises, oh God. No. 
Welcome to Church Online. We're glad you're here and here are some things you need to know happening this week at City Revival. Online, of course. You ready? Let's go. Revival Kids are back in action today, 11.45 till 12.30 p.m. Contact Teacher Asha for more details. Thursday, 7th October, Zoom prayer meeting, 8.30 p.m. via Zoom. See you there! And next Sunday, 10th October, be thankful at all times, 10 a.m. live on Facebook and YouTube. For more information, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, or get connected to a cell group. Have a great week ahead and enjoy the service. Today, I would like to share with you two stories that Jesus told. Both these stories have to do with a certain rich man. And the first story is taken from Mark chapter 10. This rich man ran up to Jesus, fell at his feet, and said, Master, 
What do I need to do to inherit eternal life? The young man said and claimed that he had faithfully kept all the commandments of God and lived as right as he could. Yet Jesus told him that he lacked one thing. And in Mark chapter 10 verse 21, Jesus told him, Go, sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And the response of that man, the man went away feeling very sad. Now Jesus was not being unreasonable. He was only trying to loosen this man's hold on his possessions. Then the other story that Jesus told about the rich man is found in Luke chapter 12. This rich man was doing so well that he had no more place to store his crops. And so he planned to build bigger barns so that he can store all his grain and all his goods and then take life easy. Sounds like a good plan, right? But Jesus told him, you fool. He called him a fool. That this very night, your life will be taken from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Again, it's not that Jesus is being unreasonable and does not want people to enjoy their wealth. Jesus saw into the hearts of these two men. Both these rich men in the two stories had made lots of wealth and had a lot of possessions. But their possessions had become their God. And both of them needed to dethrone these idols and consider the real treasures in heaven. Now we too need to check ourselves. We need to make sure that we are not clinging to our possessions, but that we remain generous and rich towards God and towards His kingdom and towards those purposes. It is said that giving is a reflection of your devotion to God. How true that is. I will end with a little food for thought. I read somewhere that John Rockefeller was one of the richest men who ever lived. And when he died in 1937, someone asked his accountant, how much money did John Rockefeller leave? The reply, he left all of it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. What a privilege and honor to stand in your presence and to acknowledge the one who gives us everything. Everything comes from you, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that in our offering, in our tithes, in our giving, that we will be rich towards you. You look into our hearts. You look into our attitudes. May we not be like the rich men who cling to our possessions and our wealth. May we always be rich towards you. We pray a blessing over this offering. We pray, Lord, that your name be glorified through it. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen. Good morning, City Revival. What a joy it is for us to come together to celebrate the goodness and reality of Jesus Christ. As always, let's come expecting God to do a powerful work in, in our lives. You know, every time the Word of God is declared, we need just to receive the Word and allow the Word to bring forth change. As we honor the Word, the Lord will honor the Word and God will just do something supernatural in our lives. Let us pray. Father, this morning as we come before you, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, God, that you will confirm your word with the accompanying signs. Lord, we thank you, God, that even this morning, we want to experience your reality. And this morning, we come and ask you, God, for divine empowerment. We come and ask you for divine intervention. And Jesus, that you will visit us this morning. God, that you will position us for greater things. God, we, we pray, God, that amidst the roads, amidst roads of wilderness, God, amidst the wilderness, that you will do roads and you will do the miraculous. And so, God, we want to commit each one of us into your living hands. And Lord, we pray that this morning, God, for an experience, a power experience, God, an experience with the reality of Jesus. And God, that indeed, Lord, that your name will be honored. Holy Spirit, we need your help. Bless this, uh, bless this sermon. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And all of God's people said amen and amen. You know, as we look this morning, God wants each one of us to grow. God wants you to grow. God wants you to develop, to be the person that He has called you to be. God wants to take you to the next level in our spiritual intimacy with Him. God wants you to experience all that He has for you, each one of us. God wants you to walk in His joy and His peace. And God wants you to accomplish the mission that God has given you. 
as we look at you know, the desires that God has for us, God wants us not where we are, but God wants us to be you know, where He wants us to be. And as we look at all the challenges that we face, we face challenges from, from outside, external challenges, but some of our greatest battles are the challenges within us. And amidst these challenges, each one of us must realize that God wants to protect us, that God wants to, us to live in His protection. Didn't Jesus say in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief, come on, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said that I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. This is the life that Jesus wants to give each one of us, that we will experience His provision. Come on, can I say, can I hear an amen? That we will experience His presence and that we will experience His protection. You can live in God's protection because God's, the protection of God is rooted in the presence of God. The protection of God is rooted in the promises of God. The protection of God is rooted in, the, in, in just God, in the power of God. And this is an experience that God wants us to give. There may be situations in our life or you may be battling situations where you can't understand why certain things have to happen. You know, you can't understand why uh, amidst, amidst, you know, your focus on God, but you know, certain things are happening. But even when we don't understand, come on church, look at me, our focus must be on what God says. We, we, it's not about what we feel. It's not about what we understand or don't understand. It's not about what the circumstances is saying. It's not about what the world is saying. It's not about what the people are saying. We need to focus on the Word of God. We need to focus on what Jesus tells us about, about our protection in Him. What does God say about, uh, what does God say about protection? In the book of Isaiah 54 verse 17, listen to the Word of God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgments, in judgment you shall condemn them. And this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. Come on, this is your heritage. This is your destiny. This is God's purpose over your life. That God will protect you from every enemy. And God will also protect you from every word of judgment spoken against you. God wants to prosper you. No weapon formed against you. No, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. God will protect you. In Isaiah 43, verse 2, you know, one of the prophetic, one of the prophetic promises that, I've, that we've been declaring over these weeks is Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, shall you not know that God will, God will do the miraculous. God will make roads in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. But you see that prophetic promise is backed by the promise of His protection and the promise of His presence. In Isaiah 43 verse 2, what does the Bible say? When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. You see, you and I may go through the fires of life. You and I may go through the floods of life. But you see, God's presence is, is with us. You know, God's presence, God is with us. And God will protect us from adverse circumstances. Come on, can I hear an amen? God will protect us from every enemy God will protect us from every word of judgment. God will protect us from every adverse circumstance. In Romans, what does God's word say in Romans 8.31? Oh, people of God this morning, he who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. In Romans 8.31, the Bible says this, what, shall, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, who can be against you? If God is for us, who can come against you? You know, what can come against you? What can come against you? So here you see God will protect you from things that are coming against you. Come on church, this is the protection of God. Oh, that we need to focus on who God is. We need to focus on what God has promised. 
We need, even if God allows something to happen, let me tell you this, if God has allowed something to happen, it is to grow you. If God has allowed something to happen, it is to fashion you, to design you, so that you will, that we, that you will accomplish the mission of God. You see, every trial that God allows in your life, every trial that God allows in your life is to develop you, to grow. But every temptation that the devil brings in your life is to defeat, to defeat you, or to discourage you. And so this morning, God allows things. Our whole purpose in life is to fulfill His plan. And it is God's will for you and I. It is God's will for you and I to live in God's protection. Sometimes, you know, God will not allow things to happen in our life which He cannot protect. God will always be there for us. When we go through the dangers of, when we go, to, if you now want to experience safety in life, it is not just, it is the presence of God and not the absence of danger. Our safety, our protection is in the presence of God, whether the danger exists or not. And God allows storms in our life so that we can experience His provision. God allows us to go through battles in life so that we can experience His power. God allows us to go through adverse circumstances so that we can experience the presence of God. Come on church, wherever you are, amen, this morning, this morning God wants to challenge you uh, to live, uh, to live, to live in God's protection, uh, to live in God's protection. Amidst all the things that we are seeing in this world, live in God's protection as we face, amen, the challenges around. Live in God's protection, the spiritual challenges, the financial challenges, the physical challenges. We need to live in God's protection. This morning, I want to I wanna, I wanna just declare this, God's sevenfold protection system. God's protection system. God's sevenfold protection system. And we are going to look at Psalm 18. Psalm 18 is the fourth longest psalm. And as you look at Psalm 18, it's a psalm of protection. It is a psalm of the way God delivered David. David was running. His enemies were wanting to kill him. Saul was wanting to kill him. And you know, he had so many challenges in his life. He had already been anointed king, but for 20 years, come on church, 20 years he lived as a fugitive. He lost everything in his life. He lost his youth. He lost, he lost financial situations. He lost his family. He lost the dreams that he had. He lost everything in his life, the comforts of home, and he lived as a fugitive. And as you look at Psalm 18, we do not have time to read through the whole psalm, but we're going to focus on one verse. You know, you see how God protects. You see, as you read this psalm, David puts his, David puts his trust in God. As you, as you read this psalm, David you know, just focuses on the presence of God. As you read this psalm, you know, David just looks at the protection of God. He was living in God's protection. And you and I this morning, we need to discern and we need to be like David. Amen. You know, he lost everything. But yet, there was but one thing in David's life. He was steadfast in the Lord. Come on, you and I can lose things. You and I can battle things that we don't understand. Negative things, unfavorable people, unfavorable circumstances. But listen, but, but we need to be steadfast in the Lord as David was. In Psalm 18 verse 2, it gives the sevenfold God's protection system. Sevenfold GPS, sevenfold God's protection system. And as, you, as we look at this uh, Psalm 18 verse 2, oh, come on church this morning, position yourself for protection, divine protection. Position yourself to experience God's deliverance. Position yourself to experience the presence of God. In Psalm 18 verse 2, the Bible says this, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. As you look at these words, you know, amidst the challenges that he was going through, you know, David had such a personal relationship with God. My God, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my strength, my shield, my salvation, my stronghold. And sometimes in life, we go through the challenges of life 
every trial that we face, come on, every challenge that we go through, everything that we don't understand, although it may be tough, it must draw us so that we can have a more intimate relationship with God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. We, it must draw us to have a more intimate relationship with God. You see, the devil will do whatever he, he can uh, to, to, to obstruct or hinder our relationship with the Lord. But you see, every challenge that God allows us, every trial that we go through, must cause us to get uh, into a greater intimacy with God. And here, as you look at this, you know, as you look at Psalm 18 verse 2, what are the seven for God's protection system. The first thing that David said is the Lord is my rock. Come on, God is your rock. Amidst all the challenges that you're going through, God is your solid foundation. God is unmovable, unchanging. Your circumstance around you change. People change, but God never changes. God is your foundation. And because God is your foundation, God is the one who protects he is the rock that protects you. He is the rock that you can stand on. He is the rock that you can stand and fight the, you know, the enemies or the battles in life. Why? Because he's your rock. You know, as you look at, as you look at Joshua's life, he just took over the leadership of the children of Israel. We've just, done, we've just completed the study of the book of Joshua in the cell groups. And as you look at Joshua's life, what was one of the foundation things that God laid upon him? You know what was the foundation? In Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, what does the Bible say? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the, come on, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And this scripture, not just to Joshua, but in the Old Testament, it's repeated. Why? Because this is foundation. Our foundation is not in the things around that can change. Our foundation is not in people that can change. Our foundation is on God, our rock, that never changes, that is strong, unwavering, and we can stand and face the challenges of life. The second thing, the second thing of the sevenfold protection in Psalm 18 verse 2, the Lord is my fortress. Come on. He is your fortress. Come on. He is your fortress. He is your security. God is your security system. Come on. We need to look at God as our security. You see, He is the source of protection. And you and I, sometimes we get so worked up with things. Why? Because we are looking at the resources. We are looking at, you know, whether this is secure, whether this is secure, whether this system is secure. And, and we forget that God is the source of your protection. We forget that God is your fortress. It is He that is secure. It is He that is our defense. It is He that will protect us. It is He that will protect us from, you know, unfavorable things. It is He that will protect us and it is He that will watch over you and I. He will watch over you and I. He will watch over our families. Why? Because He's our fortress. It is He who, it is he who positions us. We are defended. We are fortified. We are saved. And so we do not, we do not, we do not, need, to, we don't need to get worried about our lack of safety. Why? Because God is our fortress. You know, as you look at Elisha's life, Elisha was with his servant and they were in the house. And then, right, the servant looks out and the servant says, Oh, dear master, you know, the Syrian army is out. We are overwhelmed. Two men against the whole Syrian army. But what does Elisha, what does Elisha say to the servant in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16? This is what Elisha said. Do not fear, for those who are with us are far more than those who are with them. Isn't that amazing? Here, Two of them and the whole Syrian army surrounded them. And Elisha tells his servant, Amen, those who are with us are, are more than those who are with them. And immediately when the servant looks out, as he looks out at the armies that were coming against him, you know what he sees? 
He sees horses and he sees chariots of fire. Oh, there was angelic being. There were chariots of fire that were there to protect uh, Elisha and his servants. And as a result of that, of course, right, God uh, caused the army of his, the Syrian army to have a temporary blindness. And Elisha and his servant was delivered. Come on, look at me. God is your fortress. God is your fortress. Amen. God is your rock. God is your fortress. The next thing, as you look at Psalm 18 verse 2, it says, right, you know, David said, God, the Lord is my deliverer. Wow. The Lord is my deliverer. Come on. It is God that protects you. It is God that delivers you. It is God that rescues you from all your impossibilities. You know, what are your impossibilities? What are you struggling with? You know, what are our fears that we are battling with? What are the circumstances that are overwhelming us? Come on, God is our deliverer. God is our protector. And He will make a way of escape. And God, as God, come on, as God delivered David from the armies of Saul, and right through his life, as God protected him and as God watched over him, come on, the same God is our God, God our deliverer. Come on, look at Daniel's life. Daniel was honoring God, honoring God in worship. As he honored God, they put him into the lion's den. And here you see how God delivered. And what does Daniel say in Daniel chapter 6, verses 22 and 23? Listen to this. And when the king said, Daniel, are you still alive? This is what Daniel said. My God sent his angels and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And then in verse 23, and the king was so happy. And then Daniel began and, and commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken out from the hungry lion's den. And what does the Bible say? And the Bible said there was no injury whatsoever that was found on Daniel. There was no scratch. Oh, there was no, you know, there were no scars. Why? Because God is our deliverer. Come on, God is our protector and God is our deliverer. You know, September 29th will always be a special day in Shantani and my life. Why? Because it was last year on September 29th. All of you know that Shantani went for the brain surgery. It was a serious surgery. Uh, there was a growth in a pituitary gland and it already it was affecting her eyesight. And, you know, as you look at, as I look at the whole process from there, you know, the hours that the surgery took, you know, God's hand over, you know, God's hand over the doctors, uh, the, the neurosurgeon. And, you know, this whole process, you know, our, the family that worship, we family is a worship. And all of you that stood together with, our, with us in prayer. And as I look back, you know, Shantani is doing well. You know, if we just celebrate the first year of September 29th last year, of, of the goodness of God. Why? Because God is our deliverer. Come on, church. It is God that will rescue us from that. It will, that God will rescue us from impossibility. And you know, Shantani is really doing well, help much better. You know, and she's really, you know, really doing well. Why? Because of the hand of God. One of the things at that point, the scripture that one of the scriptures that God gave us at that point last year was Romans 8, 28. And what does it say? All things, come on, tell the person next to you, all things, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord who are called according to His purpose. Why? Because God is our protector. God is our deliverer. God is our healer. As you look at, you know, as you look at Psalm 18 verse 2, David, the fourth, the fourth, fourth thing in God's protection system was David said, Lord, Lord is my strength. Come on. God is your strength. God is your strength. This is not, you know, this is not human strength. This is spiritual, supernatural strength. And God will strengthen each one of us. God will empower you. God will empower you as you face the challenges of life. God will strengthen you. God will strengthen you with His divine strength. And as New Testament believers, come on, we have the Spirit of God within us. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. Oh, we have divine enablement. We have divine empowerment. We have divine intervention. 
We have, come on, God is going to bring a divine recovery, a season of divine recovery in your life. You know, as you look at David's life, right through his life, everything that David went was just challenges. But every challenge that happens, it caused him to come to God and he experienced the, the provision of God. He experienced the protection of God. At one point in David's life, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, they had come back. And when they had come back, the Amalekites had taken everything away, including their families. And here, you know, David's men was discouraged. David was discouraged. Have you been discouraged before? Come on. Every man of God went through moments of discouragement. Every man of God, sometimes, the, you know, sometimes as a result of what's outside, sometimes as a result of what's happening within them. But what did David, uh, what, does the, what does the Bible say in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6? Listen to this. Now David was greatly distressed. For the, you know, for the people spoke about stoning him. The people were discouraged and they wanted to stone him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. But listen to this. You know. Come on, listen to this. Are you ready for this? The Bible says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. You see, God is your strength. God is our strength. And here, you know, these were things, you know, these were things in David's life. These were things in David's life that he experienced the reality of God. God will strengthen us and God will help us. The next uh, part, the next thing about uh, the, the sevenfold, the sevenfold God's protection system. David said, the Lord is my shield. Come on, God is your shield. There are a lot of things that have happened in your life and my life which we do not realize, but God has protected us even without us realizing. God is our shield. You know, God, you know, sometimes God allows things to happen. Sometimes God closes the door for us because He's our shield, protecting us from negative consequences of wrong decisions. Sometimes God, you know, God removes, you know, stops relationships, all this. Why? Because God is our shield. God is our shield. God is our protector. He will protect us. He will ward off enemies. Why? Because He's our shield. And a lot of times we don't realize it. One of the things my wife and I do every day, at least twice a day, oh, we declare the protection of God over the family. And we declare, we speak the power of the blood of Jesus over the family. And each one, we need to understand this. You know, sometimes when we do deliverance as well, we need to pray for protection. We need to pray for a shield of protection. Why? Because God is our shield. In Ephesians 6, you can look at all the armor. Why? Because the battles that we are battling are not, you know, are not carnal battles, but a spiritual battles to pull down strongholds. Amen. And so, each one of us, come on, we need to realize God's protection system. God is my shield. God is your shield. David went on to say, God is the horn of your salvation. Come on, God is your salvation. It is God that saved. It is God that will save you. It is God that will rescue you. It is God that will protect you. It is God. As New Testament believers, we have Jesus. And Jesus made a public spectacle of the devil. And each one of us can experience, oh, we can experience his protection. And the, and the, and the seventh thing that David said, was God is my stronghold. God is your stronghold. God is your stronghold. God is your high tower. God is your defense. God is your refuge. And as you look at the sevenfold protection, come on, apply it in our daily life. Why? Because we need to live in God's protection. You know, in Psalm 18 verse 2, let me read this again. The Bible says, The Lord is my rock and my... The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And so how do we appropriate this sevenfold security system, this sevenfold protection system, God's protection system, and we, we appropriate it by each one of us just trusting God. David said, my God, my strength in whom I trust. 
Come on, church, this morning, we need to trust. No? We need to trust God. And, you know, I'm just going to give you two practical things that you and I can do no? that has helped me tremendously. No? In Psalm 91, verse 1, the Bible says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. And so how can you, you know, put your trust in God? How can you put your focus? Come on, church. We need to make a decision today to abide in His presence. Get to the secret place. No? You see, you know, as we journey through, when we journey through uh, circumstances in life, you are safe. You are safe and secure because of the presence of God and not the absence of danger. Because in life, there will always be unfavorable things happen. There will always be danger. But our security is in the presence of God. And the safest place that you and I can be is in the presence of God. And let me say this, there is never a moment in your life that God is not with you. And so we need to abide in the secret place with God. And the second thing that we need to do, how do we put our trust? is we need to pray for protection. We need to pray. You see, we activate God's protection. We activate God's protection system by praying. And as you look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, the Lord's Prayer, what does, the, what does Matthew 6, 13 say? And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. So here is a prayer of protection. Oh, a unique, a unique prayer that will release God's protection of your life. Praying for God's protection that, you know, that you know, God will help us never to yield to temptation. Remember I said temptation is from the devil to defeat you. God allows trials to develop us. So the trials are to develop, the temptation is to defeat. And so here the prayer of prote God's protection, that we will not yield to our temptation, and God will keep us safe from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. Come on, we are continuously in a spiritual battle, and we need to ask for God's intervention and God's protection. You can be protected. You see, the devil has infected and infested and infected the whole world system. And our only, our only thing to battle this is God's protection, the presence of God. And so this morning, amen, let our source of protection be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the one who protects us. It is He who said, no weapon formed against us will prosper. It is He who said, if God be for you, who can be against you? And this morning, you know, we're going to pray for God's protection. But before that, we're going to serve communion. I want you to get your, all your emblems, your bread and your cup. And as we, as we serve communion, you know, and then we're going to pray a prayer of protection upon every person that's watching. Why? Because He is the source of protection. Let's not look anywhere else. Though. Let us pray. Father, we thank You. God, that even as we look at Calvary, we see how, God, that you met every need of us. God, we see the demonstration of God, all these sevenfold things at Calvary. Jesus, you are the rock. In you, Jesus, you are the rock that we run to. You are our foundation. Jesus, you are our protector, the blood of Jesus. God, it is the blood of Jesus that will protect us against right, the works of the devil. God, Jesus, you are our deliverer. You are our saviour. It is you that died on the cross for us. It is you that rose again from the dead. It is you that took our sin that we can experience forgiveness. It is you that took our sicknesses that we can experience healing. It is you that took our curses that we can experience blessing. It is you that took our rejection that we can experience your acceptance. It is you that took our death that we can experience your life. Oh, Jesus, you are the great deliverer. Jesus, you are our strength. As a result of what you did at Calvary, we have the presence of the Spirit of God within us to enable us and empower us. Jesus, you are our shield, our protector. Jesus, you are our salvation. God, it is you that died on the cross for us. It is you that gave your life for us. 
And God, we rest in that. Our sins are forgiven and we are saved. And Jesus, you are our stronghold that we run to. You are our refuge. You are our high tower. And God, even today, as we hold the emblems in our hands, Lord, we want to declare, God, just want to thank you for what you did at Calvary for our protection, for our, for our provision, and God, for, for you saving us. God, even as we hold the bread in our hands, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this bread. Thank you, Jesus, that your body was broken for us. God, for that each one of us can experience life, that you gave your life for us. And this morning, we ask God that you bless this bread. And God, it, as we partake of this bread, bless this bread. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let's partake of the bread. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this cup that speaks about the blood of Jesus. We thank you that it is your blood that washes away our sin. We thank you it is your blood that protects us. Oh God, there's a blood covering. God, we thank you, Jesus, it is your blood that sanctifies us and justifies us. It is your blood that saves us and washes our sins away. And Lord, even this morning, we want to ask you, God, even as we hold the cup in our hand, we ask, Father God, that you bless this cup. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let's partake of the cup. And Father, as, as, we, as we come before you, come on, every hand lifted up this morning, as we reach out to you, right now, we pray for just divine intervention. Jesus, we pray for divine empowerment. Lord, we ask, Father God, that even today, God, for your protection upon your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray that no weapon formed against us will prosper. God, that you, Lord, that if you are for us, who can be against us? God, we pray that no tongue will rise up, no tongue of judgment will rise up. Why? Because we are your heritage and God, that you will protect us. We pray, God, that as we pass through the waters, uh, as we pass through the waters, God, of, of trials and adversity, God, that you will be with us. We pray, Father God, nothing shall touch each one of us. And we declare, if God is for us, who can be against us? God, we want to pray, God, for your protection upon your people this morning. We pray in Jesus' name for your protection against the wilds of the devil. God, we pray, God, that even today, God, that you will help us never to yield to temptation. God, that you will deliver us from the evil one. We pray in Jesus' name, no sickness shall touch us. We pray for your protection over COVID in Jesus' name. We pray, God, that even today for your protection as you are coming in and going out, that you will watch over us. God, we pray, Father God, indeed, Lord, in our journey in life, that we will always dwell under your protection and your presence. God, we want to plead the blood of Jesus over every person that's watching. And we pray, God, that even today, God, for just divine intervention. God, as we pray right now, every hand lifted up, we pray, God, for the power of God to come upon your people. We pray, God, that even right now, for just the reality of Jesus to be manifested. And now we ask, Father God, that even today, for your blessings. God, that you will bless your people. God, that you will bless their coming in and going out. And God, that you will watch over them. We thank you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen and amen come on put your hands together and give him praise la. what a wonderful jesus that we have la. what a wonderful god that we have once again thank you uh, for joining us for the service we pray that you will just meditate upon psalm 18 verse 2 la, and put on this god protection system la. amen why it will help you in our daily challenges of life la. have a great week if there's anything that we can do for you this week do contact us so god bless you and see you next week. God bless you.